This week on TGC News, double your rim fire, double your guns, and it's episode 200. Oh yeah! TacPack is an enthusiast subscription service that is focused on bringing you the stuff you need straight to your door on a monthly basis. Every month is different and you can be met with gun parts, accessories, cleaning gear, or even some bigger and cooler shenanigans. And because you're watching TGC, if you use the code TGC knife, you'll get a free ABKT knife. And if you use the code TGC break, you will get a free muzzle break only when you punch them in over at TACPAC.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Real quick, I want to say thank you to everyone out there watching, because without you guys, this episode 200 of TGC News would never have come to be. Now, how about some gun news? First up this week, Savage has announced a new style of rifles that will stretch across several of their model lines. It's called Minimalist, and the idea is to have a simplified, lightweight version of their already existing guns, specifically their rimfire guns. They'll come in three main flavors based on chamberings. The Mark II will be the 22 long rifle version, the 93R17 will be the 17 HMR version, and the 93 will be the 22 Magnum version. All of them will come with either a brown or green laminate stock with what appears to be some decent ergonomics on the rear and forend portion. Inside the stocks, you'll find a pretty basic setup with an 18-inch sporter contour barrel that's sort of a medium contour, and that will be threaded half by 28. It'll have a 10-round mag, a couple weaver mounts on top of the action because who doesn't want an outdated mounting system that they'll have to replace, and of course, the AccuTrigger. The price tag on the Minimalist series is $359 MSRP. The thing that stands out to me about this new line is that it's sort of a new take on the classics. I have no idea why they didn't go with the Picatinny optic rail. I think that's silly, but otherwise, I kind of want one of these rifles for small game control around the house. I already have a Plain Jane Mark II, and this would sort of be a nicer variant of that. What do you guys think? Do rimfire bolt guns get you amped up or are you minimally excited? <laughs> get it? <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. We have another new rimfire gun on deck this week. This one happens to be from CZ. It's called the 457 Varmint Precision Chassis. And on the surface, it looks pretty sweet. The 457 is a line that's known to be a solid shooter and... Because of that, I have high hopes on this one. Let's cover the basics. It's a bolt action 22 long rifle with either a 24 or 16 and a half inch barrel with what appears to be a heavy contour. It's also threaded for a can, half by 28. They come with five round mags and the big ticket on these is the chassis system. Out front, you have a machined M-lock slot area followed up by a beveled magwell, an AR grip, and out back is the Luth AR adjustable stock, all for the MSRP of $999. I struggle with this one. I'm confident that this gun is gonna shoot well, but a thousand bucks is a lot for a rimfire rifle. At the same time, though, if you compare it to something sort of ultra premium precision rimfire gun like a Voodoo, where you could pay over $1,700 just for the barreled action, this seems reasonable in comparison to that. I suppose this is a lot like the centerfire precision guns. At what point are you better off saving up a few more credits to buy a custom gun? I'm not sure I have the answer on that one, but uh, time will tell. How about we fire up that minigun? Izzy, send it. X-Tech Tactical is finally shipping their smart lasers. We covered these back at SHOT Show, and honestly, the technology being used here is unlike any other weapon light I've seen. Both sides of the unit have IR sensors that detect your finger's placement and will turn the light on or off without having to push the button. That's not the only way they function because they also have a button, but besides that, it has a green laser, a 185 lumen light, and it mounts to any pistol rail. The MSRP on that is $179.99. Pretty cool to see new ideas being implemented on weapon lights. 
Battle Arms has released a new 9mm AR PCC pistol thing. We need a better name for this type of gun. Anyway, it's called the Zephos 9P, and it's pretty rad looking. It's an 8-inch barrel 9mm with a full billet receiver set, an SBA3 adjustable brace out back, X-Tech grip, and a few other trinkets that make it pretty nice. The price tag on that falls in at $1,999 MSRP. I'll let you guys rage in the comments like normal about that. And rounding us out, the background check numbers for November are in, and guys, we set a record. Mm -hmm, we did. November 2019 had the highest recorded number of background checks for that month in U.S. history at over two and a half million. This topped out November of 2016 by about 13,000 checks. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about this. Perhaps that injection of dollars into the gun economy will help folks bring some really interesting stuff to the market in 2020. We shall see. Kinetic Development Group has been leading the charge on innovation for a long time, and they are a one-stop shop for everything related to the FN SCAR. Whether you need a scarging handle, an MREX rail, or maybe a sweet quick detach optic mount. KDG has all of that and more. And if you use the code TGC10 over at kineticdg.com, you'll get 10% off your entire order. And now, as you guys always request, Patton's Armory. This is a segment where I grab one of my personal guns and tell you about it. This one's gonna upset the internet a little bit. This is my XD9. It happens to be the V10 ported version. I have had this gun for a very long time and I thoroughly enjoy shooting it. People say that the grip safety on these is terrible. People say that these are not reliable guns. I have not had more than one particular problem recur on this gun. There's a pin on the top here. I don't know what part of the fire control it actually holds in the gun. Never actually dismantled it all the way. I'm not sure exactly what that's holding, but that pin tends to walk its way out. Otherwise, it's got 10 holes in the barrel. It shoots fire out of the top. It's cool. And uh, also it has an O-light on it because let's, it's a dead O-light. <laughs> it's a, apparently it's not charged. But anyway, it's got no light on there for uh, common section fodder. Either way, uh, this is not a fancy gun, but it is a lot of fun to shoot, and I actually do enjoy it, regardless of how many people talk crap on XDs. If you enjoyed that look at my guns and you want to see more, let me know down in the comments. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, if you disliked it, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. Be sure to check out things like our affiliate links. We have a buttload of those. And we also have a second YouTube channel called TGC Surplus, where we have our TGC podcast and many other things. Also, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Here's the 200 more, right? Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.